Our friends over at Xtool sent us the new P2 55 watt desktop laser, and we're gonna do an unboxing and setup right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, Builder, to make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we got a new toy, and it's bigger than a bread box. This is the new Xtool P2 55 watt CO2 laser. So we're gonna do a quick unboxing, setup, and our first project and tell you all about it. Step one, pop it out of the box. This guy came FedEx. There was no lift gate. There was no pallet jack. It was delivered by my regular FedEx guy. I mean, I guess it's not that heavy. It's only 99 pounds, although I didn't do any of the lifting. <laughs> The dimensions of the P2 are 39.4 inches wide, 25.1 inches deep, and 10.6 inches high, which makes this one a little bit larger than our other desktop lasers. So it may be a little larger, but it does weigh a little bit less than the others. And I think that's due to its plastic shell. Some of the pieces on here are plastic, like the backside and the piece that covers the laser tube. This came with a great quick start guide. We followed it step by step. What's different about this one is that the water coolant comes separate and you add that after the fact once you unpackage it. Which was a good thing because this thing was delivered on its side, which made me a little bit worried about the water inside. <laughs> so the first thing it wants me to do is finish removing all the foam from the inside and then unscrew the screw that fixes the base plate. So the screw is at the front bottom of the laser. I had to get that screw out so that I can pull out the base plate. Once I remove the base plate, I'm going to take out the rest of the foam and there's some acrylic in there. I'm going to replace the base plate and replace the screw, put the screw back in it. And what's interesting about this one, uh, this laser comes with a blade bed instead of a honeycomb bed. So that's different than the other lasers as well. These blade pieces, they're removable. You can take them in and out. You can move their configuration. They're just held in with a, like a little spring at the top and bottom. I'm gonna make sure the laser head moves freely. I'm gonna move it around the entire cutting area. Not only did it come with all of the components to put it together, like its cables and its exhaust tube and the water, it also came with a few test cutting materials, three millimeter basswood, some corrugated cardboard and transparent acrylic. The p -tool has a larger working bed size. The processing area is 23.6 by 12.1. This thing comes with two 16 megapixel cameras. It's got one panoramic camera back in the back. This is a picture of the entire bed. And then it's got the close range camera. This camera sits on the actual laser head and you can actually take a picture that's not fish-eyed and actually align something really closely. It'll, it'll zero in on a piece of that cutting area. This also comes with adjustable air assist, so you can turn the air assist on or off depending upon whether you're engraving or cutting. A great safety feature on the P2 here is that the lid locks while it's running. You can't open it while it's running. Uh, and it has this emergency off switch on the side, so if there are any issues, you just hit that and everything stops running immediately. Step two, hardware install. To fill the tank, we need to remove the plate over the tube in the back. And to do that, we have to remove six screws from the front of the machine and five screws from the back of the machine. And don't forget the one screw in the top left of the front. It's a little hidden. We're gonna fill the antifreeze. The mixture depends on where you live and whatever your lowest temperature is. Once the antifreeze is full, we're gonna power on the machine and let the laser tube fill with the water. Let that run for about 30 seconds, turn it off, and then top off the antifreeze level in the coolant container. Thank you. 
We're gonna replace the back panel that covers the tube and screw it back in. Finally, we're gonna add the exhaust tube using its little clamp that it comes with. I'm gonna put the other end into an air filter that we already own. Step three, software install. The Xtool does come with its own free software, Xtool Creative Space. There is no subscription fee, it's just straight up free. It also works with several operating systems, Windows, Mac, iPad. Xtool P2 also supports the use of light burn software, except you'll lose things like the auto pass through, batching, and engraving on curved surfaces. Xtool Creative Space has come a long way from when we first started using it back with the Xtool D1. Back in the day, it was pretty rudimentary, but now it's pretty robust. It's got a lot of the same features that Lightburn has. You can even do a little design work right inside Creative Space now. It supports multiple layers. You can do some drawing. You can even edit down to the individual nodes to adjust your images. It supports your standard graphic files, your SVGs, DXF, JPEGs, and PNGs. The P2 supports Wi-Fi, USB, and Ethernet. We connected the USB just long enough so that we could set up the Wi-Fi. Step four, complete setup. Do it like this, it's monocle. It's the optical alignment. To do the optical path test, we're gonna go to settings, then we're gonna go to settings on the left, and then optical path setup, we're gonna click test. We'll move the laser head using the software to the bottom right, all the way front, all the way right. We're gonna remove this little panel so that we can access the second mirror. Make sure the laser head is all the way forward and all the way right. Next, we're gonna test our alignment of our mirrors. So we're gonna put a little masking tape over, what is this, the head? The laser head hole. The laser, laser head, head hole. hole. <laughs> Here we're gonna do a quick pulse to see where the laser beam lines up on that laser head hole. It's just gonna shoot a quick burst of laser. And we learned that with our painter's tape, it caught on fire. So we're gonna need to move over to some packing tape. The hole's too big, I can't tell where it actually landed in the hole, if it <laughs> landed. We're gonna add the clear packing tape here. Here you can see the hole. We're gonna give it another quick pulse. And we can see that our mirrors are not aligned. The beam was high left. So the first thing I'm gonna do is check mirror number two. It's magnetic, I'm just gonna make sure it's seated correctly. We gave it another quick pulse and we could see that it really was off center. It's high and to the left. I'm going to have to adjust the mirror number two. And to do this, we're going to loosen the locking screws on the side. And then we'll turn the screws in the back a quarter turn each time. We'll turn it a quarter turn and then we'll give it a quick pulse. And we see that now we're even worse. We're even higher. <laughs> that we were before. So back to the screws. I'm gonna turn that screw back about an eighth of a turn. We'll loosen another screw and turn that one a quarter of a turn. Now we're gonna do the, we'll twist the screw, give it a pulse, check where it lies, twist the screw, give it a pulse until we're dead center. And then once we're dead center, we'll tighten those locking screws on the side again. I'm gonna replace the little panel that covers up mirror number two and move the laser head back to the top left. Step five, time for some test cuts. 
For our first cut, we're gonna do a star. That's what the instruction video does, is a star, so we're gonna follow along. I was surprised to see how many different shapes they had. Yeah, isn't that great? I know in Illustrator, I get so aggravated when I can't do a simple heart. I'm gonna select this as a cut. And I was also surprised how many preset materials they had in this little drop down, like a lot. So we're just gonna select three millimeter basswood. That's what we have. And uh, that's it, right? That's all I have to do. Yeah, click yeah. process. Process. And then process. You do have to hit the start button on the machine to get it to do anything, to get it to move and go, which locks the door. I love how quickly that Z axis came down. Look, it just dropped right down. Here. All right, I think that looks great. I know there's very little charring on both the front and the back. And it was only like 27 seconds. So that was a pretty good cut. Good first test cut. Now here's the big question. Is it gonna do quarter inch MDF? We're gonna do a refresh of the bed. I've already put the board in there and we're gonna see if I can cut this same star out of quarter inch MDF. Let's go back to our materials. And let's go to more. I was shocked to see how many more materials they have. Like, look at this list. I mean, I'm just looking at six millimeter and like 10 things comes up. Three different thicknesses of MDF. I do enjoy that. All right, their settings didn't go all the way through. It looks like it almost went through. It's peeking through. And since I'm at 100% power, I'm gonna back the speed down a little bit. I mean, that is the right measurement, 0.236. So I'm just gonna take this down to 10. I feel like 10 is safe. Oh, wait, I, I need to move that star so I'm not cutting over the old star. Let's refresh the bed. Gonna refresh the bed, see where this thing hits. Now I know with the fisheye lens, things get less accurate as you go towards the edge. So we're gonna actually use their close capture view and see how close we can oh, get testing its limits testing the limits <laughs> cut number two so it took a close picture of it using that 16 megapixel camera and now i can really zoom in i'm at like almost 400 percent and i'm going to try to see how close i can get it to that scored star I love how that Z-axis drops down so fast. It's like, and boom. what you can't see here is that when he was doing that close alignment with the camera on the laser head, the camera did shift over and hover over the close view section. You see that I can't open the, the door. I'm ready to go take a look at it, but it's not it's not done processing, so it won't let me open the top lid. And it looks just like it did on the Creative Space. Landed right next to the other star, very close. And uh, that looks like a clean cut too. And the edges aren't too charred, so they no. look pretty good. That looks brown, that's nice. Step six, time for our first project. 
It's gonna be a real world, real project. We're gonna load our quarter inch MDF and the board that I put in is 14 inches by 25 and a half inches. And the board that I just placed on top is a typical board that I use inside my Glowforge. For our first test cut, we're gonna load in uh, one of our SVGs and create a desktop version of our sign. This one is 10.3 inches and we can fit the backer and all of the top layer pieces on this one board. The exhaust fan on this machine pulls about 145 cubic feet per minute. The cleaner you can keep the air inside the machine while it's cutting, the cleaner your cut is gonna look. So you might consider adding another inline exhaust fan to pull even more smoke out. But so far, this is doing pretty good with the cut that we have with the built-in exhaust fan as is. A little bit more about this machine while things are cutting. Remember, this is a 55 watt CO2 glass tube laser. The Z-axis moves up to three inches. The processing area, again, is 23.6 by 12.1. And the max working piece height is with the tray, it's two and a half inches. Without the tray, it's 2.7 inches. And with the riser base, which is an optional accessory, it can cut something up to eight and a half inches. The cut time on this was about 19 minutes. That wasn't bad at all. I'm surprised at how much that just the extra five watts will increase my speed. Yeah, this is a pretty complicated cut because it has all of those tiny little puppy paws on there, but you can see the edges are nice and brown. They aren't too charred. There's not a lot of burn marks on the material, so it looks great. We're just gonna paint it as is. What I'm really excited about though are some of the features that we haven't even touched on yet. Things like the automatic pass-through where it uses a conveyor belt to automatically feed material through during a pass-through cut. I'm excited about that. The automatic pass-through does use a set of risers, so we don't have the risers yet, but I'm excited about using the risers because that'll allow you to engrave something up to eight and a half inches tall. I'm also looking forward to using the RA2 Pro rotary tool. This is a four-in-one rotary tool. This works with some of the other X-Tool accessories and it works with the P2. I'm super excited about, and I think the most excited about, is the engraving on concave and convex surfaces with the automatic Z-axis. I can't wait to just test that out. I have a bunch of ideas for that one. Right, that'll let you engrave on the inside of a bowl or the outside of a bowl. Or the top of a skateboard or the bottom of a <laughs> skateboard. <laughs> uh, we are about out of time. So if you're not gonna join us for the Patreon after show, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it and make it again. And don't forget to join us on Tuesdays where we'll do a test cut Tuesday where we're usually testing out a new design, painting it and putting it together. And one more time, I just want to say thank you to Xtool for allowing us to test out this brand new machine. I'm super excited and I hope you guys are excited about it as much as we are. Yeah.